Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the Schrodinger equation for a free particle and solve the Schrodinger equation using the Fourier transform. So the Schrodinger equation for a free particle i.e. a particle in a region where potential energy doesn't vary. And so in that case, you do is you typically set to zero, typically set to zero. Okay. For a free particle is I U T is negative U X X u of x, 0, is some given function f of x. And the domain of this is the following. So our domain here is going to be x between negative infinity and infinity, and t greater than or equal to 0. Okay, It's actually time reversible, so it doesn't really matter if I do go forward or backward in time. We'll do forward in time. And I want f to be sufficiently regular, so I would like f to have a Fourier transform, right? So in other words, I want f sufficiently regular, i.e. f hat needs to exist for this calculation. Okay. All right, so we're going to proceed with our typical approach to these problems. We're going to take the Fourier transform in the spatial variable. Okay, so take the Fourier transform in the spatial variable. Okay, so we'll do that. We'll get i. And then partial, partial t of u hat of xct, we Fourier transform the spatial variable over here, is equal to what? Is equal to negative, and then negative 4 pi squared xc squared, because I have a negative sign over here, and I get the, my two derivatives, I get that, u hat xct. Now I've turned this into an ODE. Now, of course, by choice of sign convention over here, this is going to be exactly just 4 pi squared xc squared u hat xc t, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by negative i. So if I do that, negative i times i partial partial t u hat xc t will be equal to negative i negative 4 pi squared i xc squared u hat xc t. Now the whole point of this is that i times i is negative 1, so this is just partial u partial t. Great. So this is partial partial t u hat xc t is equal to negative 4 pi squared i xc squared u hat xc t. Great. Now this is an ODE. It's a first order ODE. So we can solve this. So the solution therefore is u hat xc t Remember that, just trivially, if I have any OD that looks like this, if I have D minus A applied to Y is equal to zero, the solution of this is Y is equal to a constant E to the A T, right? And so we're just going to use that over here. So what will that solution give us? That solution will give us a constant, which depends on XC, of course. And then what? And then E to the minus 4 pi squared I XC squared T. Great. Of course, I can use Euler's formula for this in terms of sines and cosines that I wish, right? And plugging in, um, we know from this initial condition over here that u hat xc zero is just f hat of xc, right? And so when I plug in c equals zero, I have to get f hat of xc, so that tells me that this is going to be exactly just f hat xc, e to the minus 4 pi squared i xc squared t. Great. Now let's recall our rule for Gaussians. Our rule for Gaussians is that the function, so... We know that e to the negative pi x squared Fourier transforms to e to the negative pi xc squared. So how can I use this rule together with what we have to do the inverse of this thing? When I do the inverse Fourier transform, I'm going to have to do a convolution of f with the, whatever the inverse Fourier transform of this thing is over here. So we're going to use that scaling law. So let's look at this kernel over here, this e to the negative, I'm going to write e to the negative 4 pi, I'm going to plot 1 pi, and then an i, and then it, uh, a t, and then we'll have a pi xc squared, pi xc squared. 
So we have over here is I really have the square root of this expression over here is what I'm scaling by. So if I inverse Fourier transform this thing, what will the inverse Fourier transform of this thing be? The inverse Fourier transform of this thing is going to be one over the square root of four pi i t e to the what? e to the negative x squared over four pi i t. Okay? Because what will happen over here is the x, the pi will cancel out. It will get exactly just this expression over here. Now I can put that, that i, because I know that 1 over i is the same as negative i, so this is exactly the same thing as 1 over the square root of 4 pi i t, e to the negative, uh, let's turn on to an e to the positive x squared with an i. So that's going to be positive x squared i, i x squared over 4 t. Great. And so now I can write down our solution, right? So our solution, u of x t, u of x t, the solution of the Schrodinger equation is going to be 1 over the square root of 4 pi i t, the integral over r, f of y, and then this e to the i, and then we're going to have a y minus x, x minus y, squared over 4 t d y is the solution of the Schrodinger equation for a free particle. Now the cool thing about this is that we can easily check that it's using Poincaré. I know that the L2, this is the L2 norm of the solution of this, the L2 norm of u will be equal to the L2 norm. Of f. So in other words, the L2 norm is preserved by the flow of the Schrodinger equation. So the L2 norm of the initial data is preserved in this, in this situation. And so this kernel over here, or this expression over here, is the fundamental solution of the Schrodinger equation. So this is the fundamental solution to Schrodinger. Thank you very much.